Women Making Moves, where we celebrate the moves that women are making. My name is Amy Pons. I'm a master certified life coach and an energy healer. I'm joined today with Inga Faison Kevitt. Inga, aka Inga Fay, is an authenticity strategist. She left her engineering career to follow her entrepreneurial spirit and now pursues her dream life full of faith, family, freedom, flexibility, and fitness. She enjoys empowering female entrepreneurs with introverted tendencies to live their best life and helps them become top earners by using authentic lead generation and sales strategies that treat people like humans and not numbers. Inga Faye, welcome. Thank you for having me, Amy. It did it again. It's my trigger. It's my corporate trauma trigger, seeing the words lead generation. And this is how (laughs) Inga Faye and I got beautifully into relationship and conversation together. Yes. I had this I had this trigger when I saw lead gen. It's like, what is that? And it's so interesting because to your point upon meeting you, you're you're not that of what I knew to be right. like the icky lead gen. Nothing about you gave that vibe. It was just like my own lived experience and yeah. you know, over the course of 20 plus years. So for those who weren't there, <laughs> Inga Faye reached out to have this beautiful heart-led connection. And I said, I am not interested in being sold to. And she was like, what? Yeah, he said anything nothing. about selling anything. Not, We're just hanging out. Not speaking for you, but it was really, and that what led us to have this conversation today. It's this beautiful way of breaking down the old, the crumbling. And I'm so thankful that we both said, you know what? Let's meet. Let's have a conversation so that we very quickly got together and said, oh, we vibe and we're doing so much heart-led, soul-led work. So thank you so much for being here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for having me. All the Fs. I love all the Fs, right. All the Fs. So engineering career, um, I come from product development, product management, product marketing. Is it that type of engineering or was it something else? No, um, I worked in a chemical plant. Oh, I, wow. I worked, yeah. So I worked in a chemical plant for over 20 years. They see a lot of iteration, a lot of tweaking. If there was something going on with the equipment in my particular area, I was the person that they were calling late at night. Mm-hmm. And I can remember a time when I lived in Illinois, the guy that called me at night, I would tell him, now, look, if you're going to call me, you're going to probably have to call me about three times. And Before you ask me a question, talk to me a little bit to make sure that I'm up. (laughs) I'm not talking crazy. So I would remember him calling me and he would say, Inga, call one. (laughs) Inga, call two. Oh, wow. Finally, the third call, I would probably wake up and be like, hey, Billy, what are you talking about? I'd be like, hit the red button. I don't exactly. know. Oh gosh. Oh, then we have a problem. I don't know. I don't know. That's incredible. Wow. So yeah. you had a really important job. You still do. Was there a moment where you're like, I, I don't want to do this? Or was there something that you felt called in this work, this meaning what you and I are both doing out in the world outside right. of a, an average workplace vibe? What was it for you? Yeah. So I was called out, but at the time that I was called my mindset wasn't in in a growth mindset where I could, I really wanted to figure it out because I'm thinking, okay, I'm making this good money. I got a mortgage. I got a kid. My husband is not well right now. So it's just me. How am I going to step out at this point? And I think at that particular time where I was going through that mind shift, that wasn't the time for me to do it. And at that time, I started taking like productivity classes because I was just like, okay, I want to maximize the time that I have to really make whatever I'm trying to do work. So that's what happened. But right before all the COVID stuff, the company that I had been working for for 20 years got bought. For those of you that have been working in corporate, y'all know how that goes. They buy you, then they don't do nothing for the year. They're your friend. They're going to get all in your business. And then after that year, after they figure everything out, what do they do? Lay off. Okay. And that's exactly what happened, right? So all the times that this had happened to me before, it was never a mechanical engineer that they were laying off. So I really felt like, oh my gosh, Lord, this is like a sign. So I go home and I tell my husband, guess what? They're laying off a mechanical engineer. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. So 
fast forward, it was me and people started dropping off like flies. And at that particular time that they were dropping off, I knew that I was going to get a year's salary out of this because I had been working there for so long. So being the engineer, problem solving person that I am, I started talking to my accountant about this. Okay, so how are we going to work this? You know, I'm going to get this money. What's going to be the best thing for me to do? So he's like, well, Inga, I can just tell you, if you can get them to give you this money the next year, you would be sitting a whole lot prettier because if you get it now, it's going to look like it's a bonus and they're just going to kill you on taxes. Yeah. I was like, okay, all right, all right. So I put my big girl panties on and I went in and talked to the HR manager. And I don't think I would have done this if I wasn't leaving, but I was like, hell, I'm leaving. It don't matter, right? So I went and said, okay, let's find a win-win solution here. Y'all need a mechanical engineer because people dropping off like flies. And I want this money next year. So why don't we extend the time that I'm supposed to, I was actually supposed to stop November 30th of 2019. Mm -hmm. But because I was able to talk to the HR manager, we got it extended to January 31st, 2020. So that's what happened. I got it extended. I got my money in the, another year. So it didn't like it was a big bonus and it was a win-win for both of us. And we all know what happened in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's what happened. That, that was my moment in time. I'm grateful that it happened the way it did because I don't know if I would have been strong enough mm -hmm. to still walk out if I was still working when all of that was going on. So I'm really grateful for the timing. So that was my moment in time. Kudos to you. I didn't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I also say, looking back, I was getting the call, but I had no idea what it was probably for five or six years prior and oh, wow. yeah to your reaction of that there was nothing that was like scooting my boot to like figure it out so I was like I know that you know my guides universe were like okay there's gonna have to be something really pretty hefty here to get her to figure this out right so beautifully they set this amazing toxic workplace culture in place and a workplace abuse event in place and said, okay, let's see what she does. And that even took 10 months of that oh, wow. um, kind okay. of environment because I was so to your point, I had a big title, big money. I had actually for my quote unquote performance had just won a stock excellence award. So on paper, I was a rock star and, in, <laughs> and inside I was literally dying. So I had like a one last straw moment and I said, today's my last day. Inga, I walked away from, I mean, zero dollars out of me saying today's my last day. And I'm still grateful for the way it unfolded. There was some panic um, right away. And I almost jumped right back into the corporate pool because of said panic. And luckily, I have a great partner that was like, wait a second. You left to figure this out, right? And I was like, yes. <laughs> He's like, so figure it out. Not everyone gets to do that. And I really right. acknowledge and appreciate that that piece of it. It took me a few months. And then I realized like, oh, yeah, I want to be on the front lines of humanity, of helping others figure out what that balance is. For me, the balance of inviting back in the divine feminine, where we've been only skewed in the masculine energy. For right. thousands of years. And I feel specifically that women are on the forefront of creating the balance we've never seen ever. And so that was me answering the call. And I'm still a year and a half in, you know, I created my business in 23, but I'm still going to keep allowing myself to figure out the unfolding. I don't know that it's ever just going to be like one thing ever again. So right. I don't believe in a right way or a wrong way. And I would say that yours, your way was a little more practical. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was my push. I think, I think that would have been the only way I would have done it. I don't think I would have been like you and just kind of just said, I'm wow. out. <laughs> so mic drop, because I knew that I, I didn't have my, my husband was sick at that time. So right. I, I didn't have that cush right. of, you know, 
it's going to be okay. I got you, kind of. I knew that I was the breadwinner, so I, it was like me a do or die. And am I going to put my family through the agony of me trying to figure this out, however long that would have taken me to do? I wouldn't have so, done it. And yeah. when I say, like, he had me in terms of support, but, like, I emptied my 401k to start my business. So, right. Again, not ideal. And I know I'm going to figure it out. I trust myself so much that I'm creating the new pathway. I got it. For me specifically, it took that line in the sand because I was so at a point, Inga, that I wouldn't even, I talked to HR. And for those familiar with workplace abuse or workplace psychological abuse, when you raise your hand, more often than not, you become the problem that needs to be out. So right. it's not a lot of protection. And that's again, why I work for Workplace Psychological Safety Act so that we have a law in place so that people needing help to be able to get out comfortably and you know safely that we have a law to ladder up to that. Anyway, I digress. I just knew I was a shell of myself. So I didn't have the mental, emotional capacity to even fight. You know, and HR was like, they had one option and it wasn't good enough. So I said, okay, no, thank you. Yeah. But I think just from what you've told me in the past, I know you're the better for it. And mm -hmm. it took so much courage for you to do that. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that would have stayed in the situation because they felt that that was their only way. Yeah. So just from a mental and physical point of view, what you did was definitely good for you, mm -hmm. where others may have stayed and then endured the health implications of whatever they were going through. So thanks, Inga. I love that you said about the options. That's the whole thing with like the legislation and why I am backing the bill, the law so hard is that I want to be able to provide everyone in that situation more options. Right. Today, today it's like either you stay and endure it or you leave and take a massive hit to your it, financial. Yeah. That, and that's, that's just not good enough. So anyway, Inga, what moves are you excited to be making right now? You know, it's amazing that you talked about the male energy. Okay, so I totally understand where you're coming from, from that aspect of it, because I was in a male dominated field. Okay, so I had testosterone around me all the time, raring and blaring to go. And I am just excited to help my fellow female entrepreneur, as you shared, from two vantage points, one from being an introvert, because oftentimes I hear all of this stuff about how introverts can't be successful. They can't be leaders. There can't be entrepreneurs. They're antisociable. I think we're just totally misunderstood because we get our energy from a different place. You know, extroverts, they get their energy just by being around people and in a crowd. Well, we get our energy by being by ourselves. So just being able to first and foremost stand for introverts and stand for women is just very, very important to me. So I feel like my quest in life is to help women use that feminine energy to grow their business. We don't have to grow our businesses like men do. I can think of a time where this recently happened to me. I was on a podcast. I was invited to this podcast. I was really excited about it. But the host of the podcast was just hard selling me on this podcast in a box. I mean, he just would not let go of me. Oh, you're the perfect candidate, yada, yada, yada. Okay, yeah, I may be the perfect candidate, but dude, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I went on ahead and did the podcast and then he's hard selling me again. And I think in hindsight, in spite of all the things that I talk about, about how I want to use my feminine energy, how I want to build relationships with people, how I'm not trying to annoy people that I really want to assist them, how I want to attract people and not attack them like he was doing. I let that go for a podcast. And I'm thinking, how did I, how did I sell out like that? For this person to end up taking me off he aired the podcast initially. I told him I was not interested and stopped the messages. And he immediately took my podcast down. Mm. So I was just like, what? Inga, you didn't even have to endure that. You could have just let that go because he was not your person. And you knew that going in. And there have been times in the past that I recognize that and just immediately say, you know what? Mm -mm. I'm just going to cut ties. But I don't know for whatever reason... Mm. 
I walked that out when I didn't have to. So right now, that is my quest to really help my fellow female entrepreneur treat people like the people they are and not numbers and get caught up in that hard sell, you got to do it now type of game. Mm. And really been genuine and true to myself. That's why I like you so much. And to your point, both of us felt some type of way when we first interacted, but then we're like, no, let's meet. And I felt that was the divine feminine saying, y'all are doing similar things. And I'll speak for myself. I'm used to operating in only a certain type of energy. And for those who aren't aware, there's a divine masculine and divine feminine energies. It has nothing to do with gender. We all have both. But the divine masculine is action, order, structure, which is awesome when balanced with the divine feminine of creation, trust, and flow. Beautiful balance so that what is created can be released into the world. Well, you can imagine, I'll speak for myself again, when someone comes to me and Inga, you didn't even say anything about selling, but I think I read lead gen in your title or your headline and I was like, ah, ah, ah. It was like my alarm bells went off because I had only been used to or trained or whatever you want to say about it in the masculine that has now become toxic. It's not just about the order of the structure. Like we, we need all that, but it's, it's gone to only that where it's only about power over another. It's like, look what you don't have. I'm going to make you feel bad about it. So you want it. Whereas like now, especially in my own business, And leaders like you, I'm meeting all of these great humans that are like, no, we want to actually say, here's the unique brilliance I bring into this world. It's more of like a desire marketing rather than like a lack of, which I feel that we're moving into, which is more, I feel, of the balance, which is the flow of the feminine and the structure of the masculine to say, here's what I have and why it's cool. And here's what I could do to help you if you want it. If not, absolutely amazing. Right. Exactly. That you're really there to serve yes, um, and not, yes. and not make somebody feel bad that they're missing out. There's, there's yeah. no FOMO in it. It's, it's serving. And then really making it a point for people to decide. They realize that they can either sit here and whine about it, or they're going to take action and do something about it. But don't give me, I don't want to hear how it's not working and all this other stuff. And all you want to do is whine, but you don't want to take action. If you want it, I can help you. I would love to help you. I would love to serve you in that way. But you got to take the action. I'm not going to sit here and beg. And that is not me at all. I mean, that's not coaches at all. We don't give advice. We don't tell you what to do. We guide to like what you want to do innately for yourself. Exactly. Um, But to your point, there's got to be a want there. So like even in, in my intake meetings, and I call them vibe checks, but I'm like, are you ready to take action? Right. Um, personally, this is where I feel the biggest difference between like a therapist and a coach. If you are stuck dwelling in a specific time, place, or trauma, that is probably going to be more of a therapy therapist for sure. Whereas like, okay, I feel amazing and I'm ready to take the next step. Ooh, yep. where do I go or how do I get started? Coach. coach so exactly. I love that you use the word serve whatever business you're in, when you take on new business that isn't an energetic alignment with your core values or like what you say you stand for, or if it's out of fear or scarcity and things like that, you're going to keep on getting more of those. It's awesome if you could understand that, identify it and say, no, thanks, not a good fit so that you can make room for what is a match. Yep, for sure. So I want to go to a post that you made on LinkedIn recently, and it really resonated with me and I have a question about it. So you wrote, in today's nonstop world, taking a moment to recharge isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity for professional success. And it's talking about your latest newsletter, Recharge to Achieve. If they took a nap and they're like, "Ah, that that wasn't it, that didn't recharge me. What if they don't know what a recharge looks like for them? (laughs) I really think that is something that they would have to personally figure out. Like what you just described as coaches, we, we don't give answers. We help guide them through it. So it would be really important for them to try different things. I mean, just like anything else, entrepreneurship or anything new that you're learning is an iterative type of process. So you may not necessarily get it right the first time and that's okay. And being okay with 
you're going to figure this out until you do is the mindset you definitely want to have. It's very imperative not to have that fixed mindset, but the really growth mindset that I'm going to do this till I figure it out is Mm -hmm. really imperative. So yeah, you took a nap for an hour and that wasn't it. Okay. So what are you going to do next time? Are you going to go maybe walk around your block and and recharge that way? Or are you going to go read a book? Or maybe you want to just hang out with some really positive girlfriends that you haven't seen in a while, just trying different things until you figure it out. I mean, that's what we do as entrepreneurs. And I guess that's one of the things that oftentimes people don't like about it because it's not planned out. It's not like it was when, you know, I was working in corporate because I did what my parents told me. I went to school. I got the degree. I worked for the Fortune 500 company. I didn't work there 30 years to get my gold watch, but that was the plan that I knew to do. And typically that's what most folks know how to do. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, you know, I was talking to somebody earlier today and they were like, okay, when I quit my job, my goal was to replace my income in a year. Okay. We can have those goals, but it may not necessarily work out that way. Does that mean we stop? No, we just keep moving until we get there. You know, one thing I've definitely learned as an entrepreneur, we're very optimistic. (laughs) We're more (laughs) optimistic than we are anything else. So we may have a plan or a deadline on how long something's going to take. But just because you didn't make that deadline doesn't mean you stop. You just keep going until you do. So I think that's the same process when it comes to figuring out how to rest and how to take care of yourself, especially if you've gotten into this grind and you feel like you have to be working all the time. I remember I I had this poll that I did on LinkedIn and I asked, how many days do you take off Mm -hmm. a week? I'm just, just curious, just wanted to know, you know, it was so many people that said I work seven days a week. And I'm thinking, how is that? I know personally for me, I get the most creative ideas when I'm just chilling or I'm, I'm working out. I make it a point to have a notebook or something with me because it's just like something just like comes over me for some reason because I'm chilling and it's yeah. just like, oh my gosh, that was so good. Let me go write that down. Yes. Yes. And it's just like the the biggest thing I can remember, I call it the A game, but I just quickly rattled off to you guys about how you want to ask and not assume and you want to assist and not annoy. You want to attract and not attack. That was That was a Sunday afternoon watching a movie when that came to me. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh my gosh, that is so good. I love that you said that because some of my favorite times to quote unquote work is on a, like a Saturday or Sunday afternoon when I'm just flowing and suddenly something will pop in and I'm like, ah, and I'll open my laptop. And, you know, if I don't have commitments during the week, like I, I take those for myself, like whatever that looks like, whether it's catching up on something or like this morning. I don't work on Monday mornings, like until one, I'm not a morning person, never have been, never will be. Uh, and this morning I had an amazing myofascial release. I wouldn't call it a massage because it does not feel good. It's amazing. That's what I do when I have those free times. Remembering how to do that because we don't have a fixed schedule. Maybe I shouldn't talk for every entrepreneur. Many that I know don't have a fixed schedule. So one of the types of currency I feel often gets overlooked in entrepreneur world is our wellness, our psychological wellness. For me, yep. in the first time in my life, I'm okay. And I mean that like in every aspect. And that's the first time in my life. And I think that's a currency that is underestimated. Oh yeah, it is. It is. That flexibility to do things when you want, with who you want, however long you want. I just absolutely love that. I know personally for me, my son is now a sophomore in high school, but you know, through all this COVID stuff that we were going through, I was actually able to go to every one of his games. And I know I would have never been able to do that if I was working in corporate. Never. Never in a million years would that have happened. But that felt so good to me that I could change my schedule, similar to what you just described around what was going on. Okay. So I take off a Thursday afternoon to go to his game. Okay. So maybe I'll have to work on Saturday, but I did have this Thursday Mm -hmm. to do it because I I was able to, to do that because I have the flexibility to do that and still be able to get the work done. No, that's exactly right. And I don't, suggest that you have to be an entrepreneur to do that. When I was in corporate, my team, I was like, I don't care where 
or when you work, <laughs> just as long as we get some things done. Like I didn't, right. I didn't care. I was not looking to check on them like that. That wasn't my job. Like my job was to make sure they're okay. And it's nice to now have that for myself. So yes, for sure. How do you recharge? I recharge by myself. I could be just looking at a movie, a rom-com, or I could be reading a book, or I could be napping. I mean, I, I'll just keep it real. Yeah. But that's typically, it's it's normally by myself. That's, mm-hmm. that's how I recharge. And I know that because I like my husband wanted to go out on Friday and I was just like, okay, well, I'll go out. I just need a nap. I just, I just need a nap, just need a nap and I'll be good. And, you know, after I get my nap, I'm good to go. And I was after I I had about an hour and a half nap and we went out hanging out with some friends and I was good. I was good. I was grateful for that because I know that that's what I need. I guess that's another thing that I love about entrepreneurship, too, because it's the best self-improvement course you would ever take because you are really have to be in tune with who you are and your struggles and what you're good at. And, you know, all those different things play into how you grow your business, unlike they would ever play in, you know, working for somebody else. And I'm sure somebody will say, oh, Inga, it's different. Okay, I can just tell you it's different because when you work for somebody else, they're telling you the vision, they're giving you the task to do and you're following through. But when you're an entrepreneur, you're figuring it all out. You don't have anybody telling you nothing. (laughs) So if you don't figure it out, it ain't happening. So- You know what I do miss? I like to think that every person along their career has had that one amazing leader Mm -hmm. who they can go to. I do miss having someone, I get into the office and I'm like, it's one of those mornings. And they're like, you got this. Okay. What do you need? You want to go get a coffee? Like, what's up? I don't have that. So it's, it's all us. I mean, of course I could call Inga and be like, Inga, it's one of those mornings. Help. That's something that that I do miss is having either a team physically that I can talk to every day. I have a team, you know, but like, again, it's not, it's just not the same. So to your point, it's all us. Yeah, it is. Mm. We are amazing. So you talked some about who you serve, who you don't serve. If you do, or when you do run across folks who are, to use your word from earlier, really whiny, what does that look like for you? That conversation going forward with them? I know that people have their whine moments, moments, and that's the key, that it's a moment, not Mm -hmm. something that they're doing on a regular ongoing basis. Because if somebody continues to do that, I would have to pull out because I'm not, I'm not her. Mm -hmm. I'm not her. I have a t-shirt, one of my branding t-shirts is I am her. But if they're coming at me like that, I'm not her. I'm not her, not her, not her at all. Let's add that to your merch. I want people to succeed. And I feel like that's my mission is to serve female entrepreneurs with these introverted tendencies and help them to succeed. But I cannot do it by myself. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like I'm being handcuffed by them wanting to whine and complain about certain things and not take the necessary action to turn this thing around so they can get to their promised land, I am not it. Which means if I need to give money back, I'm going to give it back and say, girl, I am not her. I'm not her. She's got some larger. Larger, yeah, larger issues. And then if I have someone that's within my network that could possibly help her, I would refer her to that Mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. But I am not her. (laughs) You ever say like, okay, you got 10 minutes, go. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. A moment. I think we all should be given that moment because I know I've had that whiny moment. Oh yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I cannot believe this is going on. You know, I sit there and whine and it's just like, okay, Inga, you've had your moment. Yeah. Now, what what are you going to do? That's what is, that's really, what are you going to do? Because sitting on your hands is not an option. I give acknowledgement, especially as an energy coach, I give acknowledgement of where it's coming from. So when my corporate wound does rear, I'm like, Ooh, Hey, welcome back. Uh, (laughs) What's up? (laughs) I know you're here to keep me safe, but what, what, why are you, why are you here? And I just kind of work through the energy with myself and say like, Okay. okay, something around, there's a person, place or thing around me that has triggered this and she's here. And then I help to show her like, we're safe. We're here. I show her what we're doing, what we're up to. And then I'm able to kind of meet the energies both where they are. But um, 
Yeah, it, but it's not always, but it's not always that balanced. I would love to say that it is. The days, especially in my lateral luteal menstrual phase, mm-mm, she's winning and we're going to go to bed and watch a movie. That's what happens. But that's what that looks like when she wins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think that's why it's so important to have entrepreneurial girlfriends Yeah, that you can call and say, okay, I'm having a moment. And yes. uh, I need you to talk me off the cliff because, uh, yeah, it's one of those days. I'm in the process of creating a, a mastermind. Mm. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to have to invite you because Please. it's going to be a mastermind of women where we yeah. can support each other and really be there for each other. And that was one of the things that we had as a guideline that we weren't going to cross. We were not going to cross sell that we were really there to support one another, Mm -hmm. um, share any key learnings that we've learned along this journey to make it something easier for somebody else to go through and really be there for one another and hold each other accountable. When you have that kind of environment, it's definitely a better place where you can truly be real and just be, you know, authentic Mm -hmm. where you don't have to, because I find so many times It's like a competition thing. This is where the male energy comes in. You're in a networking meeting and somebody says something. Well, I just made a million dollars. My company just went to a million dollars in sale and I did this and this and this. So then you feel the obligation that you have to kind of burst your chest out too and say what you've done. But I mean, at the end of the day, okay, we're all entrepreneurs. And just because you did that yesterday, doesn't mean that's going to continue. So why not? help each other out and take all those superficial walls and you know we're meeting people's representative and not the true person because we're trying to find out if we truly can be that be authentic and real with that person and they are going to accept us and all our flaws too I think it's very important that we do that I would love to be part of that and as we start to wrap up where can we find you well, I have a website and it's ingafay.com. That's I-N-G-A-F as in Frank, A-Y.com. So all of my stuff is on there. All of my social media's information is there. If you want to leave a review, that's there as well. My website is right now in the process of being rebuilt. So all of these things that I'm mentioning to you may not be there as soon as you look at there, but it's coming. I'm just telling you that now. Because we're in the midst of building something big. But yeah, that's that's the best way to find me and connect with me. I can tell you my favorite social media platform is LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, you can definitely hang out with me there. I know that's where Amy and I met. I go on the other ones, but I'm not on the other ones like I'm on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is definitely my my happy place. So Amazing. So closing remarks as we wrap up. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the entrepreneurship versus the corporate life. First and foremost, I want to say wherever you decide that you're happy is great. So I'm not going to say either one is better than the other. I think it's really just where you are because everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur, just like everybody's not meant to be an employee. Right. So really go where wherever you, makes you happy and gives you joy. The second thing I want to say is wherever you are, an employee or an entrepreneur, If there's something that you want to do and you haven't done yet because you're nervous about it or you get kind of queasy about it, I'm just going to tell you to start. Because what I have learned is you feel like you got to have this plan all laid out and you got to know every step that's going to happen because that's the way it happened for everybody else around you. Like I mentioned that corporate ladder of going to school, getting a job, working 30 plus years and getting your gold watch entrepreneurship, and really today's corporate America is not that way, okay? I can't think of anybody that I know, unless it was old school, that worked for some place for 30 years and you only had one employer, okay? So with all of that said, just start whatever thing that you have been thinking about or wanting to do. And I can promise you, you may not know the full path of it right off, But when you start, you will know what the next step is. And that's really what you need to know. You don't need to see the whole staircase. You just need to see the next step. So take that next step and do what you were meant to do, whatever that may be, and just walk it out. And then make sure that you surround yourself around positive people that are going to cheer you on. And when you're having one of those whiny days like we were talking about, they're going to be like, girl, you are awesome. You got this. Come on, do it. Just take that first step. 
and make it happen. Thank you, Inga Faye. You are so welcome, girl. So welcome, Amy. 